headed out to the uh, airport to do a little flying after a uh, pretty long break as a result of the uh, COVID-19 crisis. It's been a while since I've uh, been out to the airplane. I've got some databases that are out of date that i got to update before we fly. And i tell you what I'm going to do. This video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take that opportunity while we're updating databases to uh, answer the most common questions I get uh, in the comments section. So stick around and maybe you'll find something interesting. I'm a former Air Force pilot with over 1,000 hours in the F-16. Today I run a medical equipment business and use my private jet to visit customers or travel with my family and friends. I video some of those flights and share them here. My name is Greg and this is my YouTube channel. Alright, question number one. What is it that you're checking here in the back of the airplane? So back here we have a couple things. We have the uh, battery, which we generally leave disconnected. So that's a quick connect for the battery. Then I can come back here and I can check a few things. So I can check the hydraulic system and make sure it has pressure. So that checks good. I can check the oil level in each engine. I can check the engine control unit for each engine. It's like a little computer that controls the engine. Okay, and that is a successful check. So another thing I get a lot of questions about is uh, what is this plugged into the back of the airplane? So this happens to be a GPU. What that allows me to do is power up the aircraft avionics and uh, run the air conditioning, which is important in Naples, but not on a day like today in Indiana. And uh, it allows me to uh, get all the avionics set up before I start the engines. Otherwise, if I don't have a GPU, I need to uh, start the engines to get the avionics running. Okay, now that I'm in the airplane and I have the uh, GPU plugged in, I can actually turn the main battery on and get the avionics up and running. Uh, which, as I said, is something I cannot do uh, otherwise until I have the engines running. So let's take a look. Come on down here to main bat. Switch it on. External power connected. I got my overhead vents running, which also tells me that it's working. And external power, 28 and a half volts. So then I can also now turn the avionics on and get those going. All right, probably the number one question I get asked is, does this airplane have a restroom? A little privacy, please. So the answer is yes, and let's take a look. So it is back here at the rear of the airplane. Here's where it lives. So there it is, and it's a flushing toilet, so it actually flushes. And there is actually partitions here that come across to make it private. And I know what your next question is. All right, so I predicted it. Your next question was, what if the pilot has to go to the bathroom, you're up here by yourself, can I use the restroom back there and the answer is no but all is not lost because underneath the pilot seat there is a funnel the little lever that exits to the outside so might be a little bit awkward for somebody in the right seat here but if you did have to use the restroom as a pilot you always got this as your last resort. Honestly, I've never used it, but uh, I have poured water down it just to make sure it works because you wouldn't want to find out during the process that it's uh, backed up, if you know what I mean. The last couple questions I get is, uh, what do I run on my iPad? And I run ForeFlight on my iPad. I actually have a Stratus with this antenna that feeds uh, ADS-B to the iPad because the airplane system does not talk to the iPad. So that's how I get traffic up on the iPad through uh, ForeFlight. 
In addition to that, over here I have my air text, which allows me to send uh, text messages in flight. It also allows me to do emails, allows me to get digital ATIS, and I can contact FBOs through FBO link and uh, let them know I'm en route or generally running behind. So that's the setup here. Final question, what is my camera setup? So let me show you guys what I do for cameras. The most recent addition is the uh, GoPro Max. It's a 360 camera. I've got a GoPro 8 over here. I have a GoPro 7 for the forward view. And over here on the left-hand side, I have a GoPro 8. I've got a GoPro Session, Hero Session, mounted right here. And then the camera that I'm using right now with my hand is a uh, GoPro 8 with the uh, Media Mod on it. It has the uh, microphone. And then for recording the audio, I have a uh, patch cord that goes into the uh, intercom system. I'll leave it a link in the info section. And I actually have a little Sony digital recorder that I use to uh, pick up the audio. Finally, what software do I use to uh, edit all this stuff together? I use Final Cut Pro. I know that Baron Pilot and, and Citation Max, they use Final Cut Pro. I think uh, Josh with Aviation 101 uses Adobe Premiere. I think either one of those are good choices. It's just a matter of what you're familiar with or what you want to invest the time in to, uh, to develop your skills at editing. It's a pretty steep learning curve, but uh, once you get there, it uh, comes together pretty quickly. So I'm gonna jump forward to the uh, takeoff portion of this video. I know that a lot of you like to see the startups. I've got like 200 videos in the past with startups and uh, fast forwarding right now to the takeoff. So thanks for paying attention. Let me know what other kind of questions you have in the uh, comments below. on fuel, just uh, 2,000 pounds of fuel, roughly. It's a short flight up to Madison, Wisconsin. 237 nautical miles. Forecast to take 39 minutes. Use a little bit over 900 pounds of fuel. Because I'm so light, I've got a pretty decent uh, headwind. My takeoff roll is gonna be pretty short. My V1 speed is 93, rotate at 101, an initial climb out, V2 at 116. Executive traffic, Premier 390, golf mic, department runway 36, exiting to the north. Departure Premier 390 Golf Mike. Premier 390 Golf Mike, Kenny. 390 Golf Mike VFR off of Indianapolis Executive, northbound up to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Like to pick up an IFR clearance. Premier 390 Golf Mike, very good. Squawk 4057. 
4057, zero golf mic. We're out of 5600 now, Zerg off mic. Mayor Zerg off mic, very good. Clear the Madison Airport via direct boiler, direct. And car maintain 1 3000. You can expect flight level 340 within one zero minute. Okay, direct boiler, direct up to 1 3000 and 340 in 10 minutes, Zerg off mic. Mayor Zerg off mic, feedback is correct. And English Cargo Center now, 135.75. Have a good flight. 3575, Zerg off mic, we'll see ya. Chicago Premier 390 Golf Mike. 390 Golf Mike, Chicago Center, welcome to the altitude. 390 Golf Mike, we're out of 10,000, climbing to 1 tree 1,000. 0 Golf Mike, climb maintain flight level 230. Flight level 230, 0 Golf Mike. And we're 0 Golf Mike, clear direct to Madison Airport. Okay, direct to Madison, 0 Golf Mike, thank you. Wow, that was nice. So, I, on takeoff, I, or after takeoff, before I called uh, departure, I got my uh, after takeoff checklist done. Climb it through 18,000 feet. I'll go ahead and get my climb checklist done. Right now, I'm in uh, autopilot with the nav mode on, so it's navigating directly to uh, Madison. I'm in flight level change, 240 knots. So I've got 240 knots selected. There's 240 in the blue. The airplane will hold 240 knots in the climb. As you can see, we're climbing at 3,400 feet a minute on our way up to flight level 230, 23,000. Coming through 18,000 feet. Go ahead and get my climb checks done. Altimeter goes to 2992. Check, make sure the cabin's pressurizing, which it is. And we're on our way up to flight level 340. So we can go ahead and get uh, ATIS set up for uh, Madison, 124.65. I can pull it up on my ship system here. Roger, you had uh, monitor with at four? Winds variable at four, 10 miles. Take the report. Few clouds at 25,000. Golf Mike, contact Chicago Center on 120.12. 12012, zero golf Mike, good day. Good day. Good day. November 390, Golf Mike, you were checking in, climbing to 230. I wasn't, but I am now at a 20.8, climbing flight level 230, 390, Golf Mike. November 0, Golf Mike, Roger, climb and maintain level 340. All the way to flight level 340, Zero Golf Mike, thank you. United, 2724, contact Indy Center, 119.55. 1955, United, 2724. Southwest 3231, contact Indy Center, 119.55. 1955, today's 2221. So, weather is good back up at uh, Madison. Climbing up to 34,000 feet. Aircraft is uh, pressurizing. We can tell this because we can look at this small needle here and we can see that that tells the differential pressure of the cabin. The outer needer needle tells me the cabin altitude. So even though the airplane is climbing through 24,000 feet right now, the cabin is only at uh, 3,000 feet. If I were to climb all the way to 41,000 feet, the cabin would be at about 8,000 feet. So the altitude selector is set for 34,000 feet. That is this knob right here. 
in white. Seven two one Mike Bravo, contact Chicago. In white up here, it says ALTS, which means the autopilot mode is going to grab the selected altitude. Contact Chicago Center one two six point three two. ALTS, and at thirty three thousand feet, I'll get one tone, which indicates a thousand feet to go before my selected altitude. And then at 34,000 feet, the airplane will level off. Bravo 3911, contact Kansas. Oh, send my son a text. Let him know that... 3505 Southwest, 3911. On the way. November 0 Gulf Mike, contact Chicago. Center 127, please. 2762, Zergo Mike, good day. Chicago Premier 390 Golf Mike 31.7 climb and flight level 340. Three uh, we got my Randolph sunglasses here. These are non polarized lenses. If you get the polarized lenses, uh, a lot of times the uh, screens uh, are. Um, screens are difficult to see, so non-polarized glasses are the way to go in a glass cockpit. And these are Randolph's. Okay, there's my thousand foot warning. As you can see, flight level 340 is flashing, indicating that's what it's going to grab. Altitude capture in green, it's capturing the altitude. And here we go, a nice smooth level off, and we will accelerate out. So we come up here and look at the MFD. We are 174 nautical miles, 31 minutes out from Madison. Also, change the map view if we'd like. So there we are. Just uh, south of uh, Gary, Indiana or so, up by Rensselaer on our way into Madison. Also take a look at the next rad map. You see we had a lot of weather move through uh, last night and this morning. 6-7 Echo Alpha, this is the main table of the 280. Starting 4 for 280, 6-7 Echo Alpha. So you can also see that we are, see we are accelerating out. 440 knots true, we're continuing to accelerate. 430 knots ground. The difference between those two tells me we have a headwind. You can see there's the total wind component. And if you come over here, you see that we're actually indicating 268 knots. So indicated airspeed, true airspeed, ground speed. All three, di climbing three different things. Climbing table level 400, that's climbing 63. Further complicated by the fact that this forward camera shows mile per hour and ground speed, which throws a lot of people off, as I've commented on previous videos, uh, thinking that I'm speeding below 10,000 feet. But unfortunately, the GoPro app only allows for speed indicated in miles per hour or kilometers per hour does not allow a knots conversion. Otherwise, I would display it in knots, although it would still be ground speed, and I'd imagine I'd still get a few comments. Alaska 417, contact Chicago, sir, 123.82. 123.82, left 417. 153 nautical miles out. Let's see if I can get the ATIS at uh, Madison. Runway 32 and runway 3 in use. Send it all short operations in effect. Notice airman, taxiway Juliet closed. Taxiway Mike signed south of runway 321 missing. Runway 32 home position sign at runway 1836 right side missing. Advise contact, you have Echo. 390 Golf Mike, send a maintain for level 240. Flight level 240, Zerg Golf Mike. 
Okay, fly level 240, dial my altitude selector down. I've got to come up here and tell the airplane how I want it to descend. I'm going to go down at 1,000 feet per minute, so I dial that dial down until the blue arrow gets to 1,000. I retard the throttle. Go ahead and get my descent checks done here. Unfortunately, we're a little bit above a cloud layer that is uh, blocking our view from Chicago. I can see some of the suburbs make out a little bit of the uh, coast of Lake Michigan. Uh, Chicago's coming into view there. I think the cameras might be able to pick it up here. 390 Gulf Mike on this Chicago, sir, 127.77. 2777, Zircon Mike, good day. Chicago Premier 390 Golf Mike 297, descending flight level 240. 390 Golf Mike, Chicago, center record. Okay, with 5693, contact Minneapolis Center, 134.25, good day. 3425, take care of yeah, 5693. November zero golf mic, just gonna maintain one six thousand Madison altimeter three zero one five. One six thousand thirty fifteen zero golf mic. Okay, so coming through eighteen thousand feet, as she cleared me out of uh, eighteen thousand feet or below eighteen thousand feet, she's gotta give me the current altimeter setting. Of course, I knew that already from the ATIS, but she did give it to me correctly three zero one five because passing. Back down through 18,000 feet, you set the local altimeter. Above 18,000 feet and above, you set 2992. Everyone does that. Picking up a little turbulence now. I'm gonna pick up some fuel at Madison. I could have fueled at uh, Indy and uh, gotten all the fuel I needed and not needed to fuel, but uh, I thought it would be a nice, uh, courtesy to Madison to uh, stop and buy some fuel from them in exchange for using their facilities. And truth be known, their fuel price was pretty good as well. So I'm gonna get uh, 2,000 pounds of fuel, which is 300 gallons. Pretty easy to convert pounds to gallons, 2,000, remove a zero, you get 200, half of 200 is 100, you add those together, you get 300, so 2,000 pounds of fuel is 300 gallons, I'm going to increase my rate of descent. See this magenta circle on the uh, rate of descent indicator? That's going to give me my uh, three-degree glide path down to, in this case, the uh, runway. Chicago, 6401, flight level 370. Yeah, 6401, Chicago, sir, Roger. So it has been about uh, three weeks since I've flown. I was, I could tell I was a little rusty on that takeoff. November 0, Golf Mike, just going to maintain one 1,000. 11,000 zero golf mic. But I'll tell you, this is kind of a, if you've been out of the cockpit for a while, a flight like this is a, uh, a good one to go on. Relatively short flight, 240 miles, the weather was good, uh, airspace not terribly congested. Chicago American 9426 with you 380. Sure, 9426 Chicago, Center Roger. Over here on the PFD, you can see a yellow line under the uh, altimeter setting. One, two, three point nine or seven. Good day. One, two, three point nine or seven. Spirit wings, uh, seventy-eight. 
That yellow line indicates that the right side and the left side do not have the same value in there. Over on the right hand side I have 3015 set. And now I can set 3015 here. Yellow line goes away. Just a little uh, bit of a way to use as a reminder to make sure that I reset the altimeter, the proper altimeter. November 0, Golf Mike, contact Madison, approach 120.1, good day. 20.1, zero Golf Mike, good day. So I'm going to check in with information echo, and I'm going to request runway 3. Madison Approach, Premier 390, Golf Mike 14,000, descending 11,000 with Echo, looking for runway 3. 390, Golf Mike, Madison Approach, Spectre, this approach, runway 3 on floor, pretty surely. So, Golf Mike, Roger. I'm sure that I will get one comment about me saying looking for runway 3. Number 0, Golf Mike, to maintain 7,000. Down to 7,000, Zero Golf Mike. Probably could have said requesting runway three. One of the interesting things about doing the videos is when you... Reserve off mic, turn 10 degrees left. 10 left, sir, off mic. <clears throat> when you do the videos, you get to hear your radio calls. Sometimes they're not all that encouraging. And I will generally leave sloppy stuff on the videos and when people comment about it I'll leave the comments on there because if you make a sloppy radio call and people call you out on it it's uh, something for everybody to learn from so I leave my mistakes in on the videos that may not be true for everyone but I do Coming through 10,000 feet, slow under 250 or less. The forward camera view 50, is... 5353, 52, contact Chicago Center, 133.3. 333, Blue Street, 5352. Forward camera view is ground speed at miles per hour. I think a tower set up, 1193. Number zero golf mic, send him maintain four thousand. Down to four thousand, zero golf mic. So I have a visual approach runway three called up. It will give me guidance just as it would with an ILS. Madison approach, Skyline seven three five Zulu Hotel request. Number seven three five Zulu Hotel. You can just check on in the request. That's always okay. Copy that. Uh, we're over Lake Geneva now, and we are northbound to Kilo Delta Alpha Foxtrot. That's the Cedar. It's like flight following. I'm Zulu Zulu Hotel. I don't have time for that right now. I just have too many other people that I'm already talking to, so just remain clear of the Class Charlie. Remain clear of the Class Charlie 35 Zulu Hotel. Well, it's nice to see somebody busy. Has not been the case for the last uh, four weeks for We're most of the country. We're not in the altitude to maintain 6,000. Number zero golf Mike, let me know when you get the airport in sight. Right now, two o'clock, one five miles, fly heading 340. Zero golf Mike, 340 on the heading, we do have the field in sight. Number zero golf Mike, then clear visual approach on a three. Clear to visual to three, zero golf Mike. Number five, then come back. Radar services terminated. Squad okay, five, so what I can do through. is I can set the five mile Start point as through. my uh, from point. Five, five, Papa, change to my frequency. Set it up there. Point four five. That gives me an extended center line. I can now navigate in just like you would with basically an ILS. Twenty five, five, Papa, Roger. So you can see I'm kind of on a dog leg here to uh, intercept the uh, final approach course. That's me kicking the autopilot off. I'm going 
going to turn over the top of the city, basically. Give everyone a nice view of that. Third divisional approach, so I'm no longer inhibited to uh, 4,000 feet. Yeah, I worked with Larry briefly when I first got here. Thermonet and Delta Romeo to send and maintain 4,000. Been cleared to visual approach. I've not been cleared to land. This is approach control. Tower control will give me clearance to land. He's not pushed me over to tower yet. Clearance for the approach and clearance to land are two different things. He is, yeah. He went down to Champagne as the manager and I kind of lost touch with him from there. Number zero golf mic, contact tower 109.3. Zero golf mic, good day. Good day. Madison Tower, Premier 390 Golf Mike, right base, runway 3. Premier 390 Golf Mike, Madison Tower, runway 3, clear to land. Runway 3, clear to land, 390 Golf Mike. Uh, there is your clearance to land. There is the football stadium. No more sightseeing. Rolling out on final. They're coming down. I'm all configured. Everything's looking good. Clearance to land. Lined up with runway three. My needles tell me so. And there we go. Got my V speeds up. Lost those somewhere along the 1, way. One thousand. A little high, a little fast. Five hundred. Still high, still fast. Hit three more on mic off, go ahead. There we go. 479 Delta Romeo with you, uh, runway three, visual. He says 479 Delta Romeo, Madison Tower, runway three, clear to land. Landing on three, nine Delta Romeo. Three through on my cap to maintain VFR to below 3000. Departure frequency is 135.45 and squawk 0451. Scarcom on my cap, read back is correct. Runway 32 taxi via hotel. There's your mic, turn right at mic taxi to the ramp. 
Right up, Mike, to the ramp. 390 Golf, Mike. Come on, Mike Alpha, you're just going to do some sightseeing over by Lake Wisconsin, or, uh, the Wisconsin River. Okay, we're good. Well, let's take the to 43 where minutes. Where would you like to stop? 240 miles. 890 pounds of fuel. Okay, that sounds great. Well, I hope you enjoyed riding along today. Uh, remember, you can follow me on Instagram at Premier One Driver, and you can go to my website, PremierOneDriver.com. That's a surprise, isn't it? And uh, got some merchandise there. If you care to support the channel, that would be the place to do it at. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. I generally try to answer them within 24 hours. And uh, I hope everyone's staying safe, staying well. And I will see you all on the next flight. So now that we've landed, the one thing I'll do is come back here and uh, check the oil level on the engine. After you land, you got 30 minutes to accurately check the level of oil in the engine. And that's what I'll do right now. Yep, both look good. See you all in the next flight.